are you concerned Thank about you. this drop that we've seen in gold? Well, I'm concerned about the erraticness of the dollar. The dollar's up, the dollar's down. We print a lot of dollars, the dollar gets devalued. That's really the concern. Now, if people think that the gold price up and down is a reflection of something wrong with gold, no, I say it's something wrong with the dollar. Because people have been expressing a concern here these last couple months about gold, but compared to but what? Compared to where gold went from when the Fed took over, when it was twenty dollars an ounce? Yeah, compared but, to you what has happened in the past? Yeah, but it's not. It's necess I mean, we it's just, not we necessarily. Just went through, we have to talk about the stability here. To see a drop, the sharpest drop in thirty years, that actually makes the dollar's price activity recently look a little bit stable. Well, in a relative sense, that might be the case, but that's the way markets work. I remember uh, in the 70s when they uh, finally uh, allowed people to own gold, it went from $35 up to $200 rather rapidly. Then it lost 50%. <laughs> and then it went on to go up to it go, went up to eight hundred dollars. So to, to compare a couple months or a couple weeks and forget about uh, a bull market in the gold price in relation to the dollar for twelve years. So I would say the comparison is, is not uh, you know not an authentic comparison. What you have to look at is the inflation. Inflation is when an increase the supply of money, and since oh a they have quadrupled the supply of Federal Reserve credit and they're buying uh, $85 billion a, a month uh, of, of, of Treasury bills. At the same time, last week, they bought $60 billion. That's the inflation. That's the distortion of market. And that's we why really we're not getting economic growth. We're seeing the opposite of inflation right well, now. Well, it depends. It de it depends on how you define it. Inflation is when you increase the supply of money, bond prices go up, stocks are going up, housing prices are starting to go back up again, education costs are going up, but the gross distortion is the effect that the inflation of the money does on the price of money and the interest rates and how it causes economic problems and why you don't get economic growth. So you have to look at the malinvestment and the destruction that occurs when you mess around with the price of money. So it's not just the CPI because the CPI isn't reliable. The government fudges that as well. They change the way they measure it. The free market economists say the CPI is going up about 8%. So it's a lot of deception going on out there. And just talk to somebody on retirement, getting Social Security. They are not happy with the purchasing power of the dollar, and you can't tell them there's no inflation. Dr. Paul, let's go back to gold for a moment, because stability, talking about the price, price stability helps to build confidence. Confidence in paper money, and certainly confidence in hard assets. With all the speculative money that went into gold on the way up and came out of gold on the recent plunge, how do you know what the real value of gold is? Well, nobody knows it other than what is happening at that moment because the supply and demand of gold is very important. That's why it is money because gold is used elsewhere and it is a commodity. But the supply and money of paper is the is the culprit. That's the one that is causing all the trouble. But people ignore the supply and demand of paper. Yes, paper goes up and paper goes down. But look at the long term purchasing power of the dollar. It's been devastating. And believe me, at the rate they're printing the money, you're going to see a continual devastation of the value of the dollar and you're not going to see economic growth until you liquidate the debt and liquidate the malinvestment out there. Sure, you're going to see housing go back up again, but you're going to see more bubble formation because prices go up doesn't mean there's economic growth. Uh, so we're, we're a long way from the correction, mainly because they ignore the definition of inflation and they ignore the need to liquidate debt and the need to liquidate and get rid of all the malinvestment and this watching the stock market. Look, one good comparison would be look at the price of stocks in gold. Although in the last couple of weeks it's changed a bit, but it, it, the price of the stock market is, has crashed because you used to be able to buy the Dow with 44 ounces of gold. Now it's under 10 ounces of gold. It's probably going to go a lot lower. Dr. Paul, how can we talk about the risk of a correction in financial assets? That's what you were just discussing, the likelihood that the Fed may be creating a bubble through quantitative easing and low interest rates and priming the markets for a crash when we've just seen something similar 
happened in gold. There was a correction in the gold price. I'm just, we're pressing you on this issue because we need you to reconcile the two. We see the characteristics that you apply to financial assets playing themselves out in hard assets. And it's tough to understand. We want you to, to share with us your views. Yeah, but no. Well, I, I think uh, I think the way gold's acting acts like a market does. You know, you get ahead of itself. There has to be correction. The amazing thing isn't the correction. The amazing thing is the biggest bull market of the century when a, a one commodity went up for 12 years straight. So you can't ignore that. But to say, well, there has to be an adjustment because prices are subjectively decided by many, many factors. So you can't predict exactly where this money's going to go. Unfortunately, the money right now is go that the Fed creates goes into reserves, further distorting the market, further pumping up the prices of bonds, further building a bubble that will burst because our economic growth is in there and we're in every bit as much trouble as Europe and as Greece. So someday there'll be a lack of confidence in our dollar, and then you're going to see the correction in the paper a lot more severe than you see the correction in, uh, in the dollar-gold ratio. I'm curious, you don't like the dollar, you don't like the Federal Reserve and other paper fiat currencies. What do you think about Bitcoin, the virtual currency, that's not backed by governments or central banks? Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, it's a, a little bit too complicated. If it's complicated to understand, and I've been studying money for a long time, if I can't put it in my pocket, I have some <laughs> reservations about that. But it's been designed in the free market, and if it's a means of exchange, it would not ever be illegal, and you shouldn't regulate it in the free market. But I don't think it fits the definition of money, which has been around for about 6,000 years. People want to see something. They can know what it is. They can define it. They can touch it. They can put it in their pocket. And a Bitcoin, if you don't, uh, Bitcoin, if you don't have a computer and somebody running the computer and the calculations, uh, you know, so you, you don't have it. So I, I, I am not, uh, I, I'm not a big supporter of that, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. And I admit I don't so, fully understand exactly what's going on So you're going sticking to it. the hard stuff. <laughs> Just wondering if you're looking at this price drop in gold as a buying opportunity. I know you also have your own portfolio of gold. Oh, yeah, this is the time people buy. I mean, if you look at it these last few weeks, there were some pictures in the paper that were astounding. I think it was in Thailand or someplace. It was a, it was a jewelry gold shop, and they were lined up six rows deep, hundreds of hundred people buying. They run, they're running out of silver coins right now. I bought, you know, recently, too, because uh, I don't like to buy when there's a lot of energy, you know, with uh, pushing them up. I wanted to see a correction. So, yeah. Yes, the people who believe it is, and this is very healthy for the economy because the speculators, the people who are in it and trading from minute to minute, they're weak holders of gold. They don't believe in gold, but they believe in helping to set the market and they, they have a function to play. But the people who really believe in it uh, are buying now and uh, literally the uh, it was in the commodities markets that sh right. shook this thing out. It wasn't in the hard assets. There was one person that dumped <laughs> 53,000 contracts in one in one sale. Right. So there's some uh, fin finagling going on there, I believe. Oh, yeah, the speculative play. All right. Well, Dr. Paul, you are a believer, always opinionated. We want you to stay <laughs> with us from Clute, Texas today for your thoughts on a potential historic fix to our nation's immigration laws and gun control on Market Makers on Bloomberg Television. Back in two. In Washington right now, there is intense renewed debate over a proposed overhaul of our nation's immigration system. After the Boston Marathon bombings in which the suspects were Chechen immigrants, some members of Congress say proposed legislation needs another look. Ron Paul back with us here on Market Makers, the former congressman from Texas, presidential hopeful. Do you think, Dr. Paul, this tragedy is an opportunity to fix our immigration system? Well, there's always an opportunity because there's a need for it, but I don't think they're going to solve any problems at all uh, because they're too big and they're very complicated. They are very much involved with economics. I don't think you can deal with immigration unless you deal with the welfare state, both a welfare incentive for some people here not to work and a, an incentive for others to come and get some uh, free services. And also, uh, I, I think it's to, uh, more important that we look at our work permit, letting people come in and work, 
and put aside this idea of how we're going to give automatic citizenship, that becomes a political football because everybody's lining up who's going to get the votes. Some One side says, oh, we're going to get all the votes. We want them all to be legalized. But I think that you have to deal with an economic policy and uh, really open up the uh, opportunities for people to come back and forth and, and to work, but not to insist that uh, everybody's going to become a citizen because I don't think that's going to work under these cir circumstances. Dr. Paul, I want to ask you about what's happening in the GOP right now. Your son, Rand Paul, the senator from Kentucky, uh, made himself even more famous than he already was with that fantastic filibuster, I mean, impressive at the very least, over the issue of drones. He has an opportunity to galvanize the Republican Party. But the old guard, with the help of people like Karl Rove, appears to be circling the wagons and trying to keep the Tea Party out. How's it going to end? <laughs> Well, with a weakened uh, Republican Party, uh, because, you know, uh, we did fairly well in the presidential campaign. We had a lot of delegates, and they were excluded from the convention. And uh, the rules have been written so that, that makes it even worse for anybody to challenge the status quo, the people who have been in charge. They don't want their party to be broken up. So when the young people want to come in, they resist it. And it was the young people that uh, were supporting me and my campaign to the tune of millions of people very interested. But nobody comes and said, well, how can we get the Republicans don't come and ask me how we can get the young people interested because I'd want them to change foreign policy, I'd want them to change economic policy, I'd want them to balance the budget, and I'd want to have them talk about the Fed and the establishment in both parties aren't interested in talking about any of those issues. The young people are. But if there's no solidarity inside the Republican Party, Dr. Paul, how on earth does it win the next election? Well, I think the solidarity is the same problem in Democrat parties and the Republican Party. It's ongoing. There's always factions. And, of course, uh, I want to unify everybody in the, in the belief in the cause of liberty, sound money, balanced budget, the Constitution. So I would say, yes, uh, there's a good way to unify them. But t for unity, for the sake of unity, makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, why should everybody give up on their beliefs? But, uh, yes, the old, the old guard uh, are losing their way. The party is getting smaller. It is splintered. And they will have to face up to the fact that if they talk about limited government and personal liberties, they have to, you, you know, actually believe in it and do something about it because the young people won't be fooled. And, and if, if this continues, the party will become smaller. So quickly, do you think your son should run for president in 2016, as he perhaps has hinted? No, you'll have to ask him. I have no idea what he wants to do.